welcome everybody. Welcome to, the, to my talk about Kafka performance. My name is Jiří Holuša and I work at uh, Azul Systems. So we have 20 minutes, let's dive, uh, deep dive into it. I know this is a late session, so I'll try to be entertaining. I'll try to cruise through the stage so you wouldn't fall asleep. Let me, talk, let me tell you something about me. So I'm a very simple person. I love compilers, I love performance, I love Java. And since I'm, I come from Czech Republic, I love beer. And that's all you need to know about me. So um, that's pretty much it. At this point, I could probably talk about what does Azul, the company that I work for, what, what do we do? But I'll postpone it and um, let's see if it naturally pops up during the presentation. So let's talk about pain points running Kafka. What do we typically worry about when we run Kafka clusters? We worry about the speed. We worry that uh, our um, Kafka cluster will not be able to um, handle the amount of operations per second. We worry about the latencies of the individual transactions, especially when Kafka is uh, used in real-time applications. So we worry about that we get delays, we get orders canceled, we, we get events missing. And also what we worry about is the infrastructure cost. We worry how much will it take, how much will it cost for us to run the Kafka cluster to support our SLAs, to support um, the business requirements. The, po the point that I will try to make is that if you improve the performance of the Kafka cluster and the Kafka brokers, you're actually able to address these pain points. The first two are kind of obvious. The, you know, if you improve the performance of, of a Kafka cluster, you're able to, you'll be able to handle more operations per second. You'll be able to um, handle more load while sustaining the same response times. The third one is maybe not so obvious, but so how we can leverage also the other point of view, how we can leverage improved performance is that you handle the same load with less infrastructure. So you actually cut the nodes. And then you can save money on, uh, on running Kafka. So let's talk, about, let's talk about how we run Kafka. What does it really mean, right? So you know, we get events flooding, uh, flowing in and flowing out. We run Kafka on our server, and that's it. I guess uh, that most of you know that Kafka is written mostly in Java and Scala. So actually, when we talk about running Kafka, we mean you have to have a Java virtual machine, a JVM installed there, and Kafka is running on top of them. When we talk about Java, you know, what, when we talk about running on Java, typically we know what this means. We're running on some distribution of OpenJDK. OpenJDK is, is a project, and then we have a, a various vendors that do builds of OpenJDK. Amazon Coreto, Oracle JDK, um, Red Hat builds of OpenJDK, Microsoft builds of OpenJDK, and so forth. And one of those vendors is Azul. Azul does its own build of OpenJDK named Azul Zulu. You might have heard of it. Actually, if you're using Kafka uh, Confluence Docker images, Azul Zulu is the default JVM there. It's, it's, the, uh, it's already embedded in the Docker image. So that's what we do. Azul does Java. That's what we do. We are a Java vendor. As I said, we have, we are, we have multiple products, but uh, Azul Zulu is a distribution of OpenJDK. So plain vanilla OpenJDK exactly the same as everybody else's. But we also have another product named Azul Platform Prime, and that's an enhanced, a slightly different uh, JDK. It's still based on OpenJDK, but it's not 100% the same, with some key parts replaced. What it does is that just by switching the underlying JVM, your Kafka is now able to be more performant. It's able to pr process more messages. And according to our results, our experience, 
experience with customers and of course internal benchmarks you know and marketing materials it actually goes up to like 40 percent better performance whatever that means whether it's improved throughput or reduced latencies so that's the basic kind of uh, message that I want to get through is that you can actually affect uh, Kafka's performance um, significantly just by switching the JVM. So no code changes, no um, tuning of your number of replicas, no tuning of uh, you know, IO threads of Kafka, and all these uh, tuning exercises that we all like to do. That looks, that looks too good to be true. So let's try to get like below, beyond shiny kind of marketing materials, and let's try to investigate together where this speed up comes from, because this is a massive speed up. Let's take a look what takes place in the, between the JVM and the CPU and the hardware itself. Just as a, just as a reminder, so you have, how, does, how do applications uh, written in Java how do, how do they work? So you have your application, in our case Kafka. You have a Java runtime, a JVM, that transfers the, that Java source code, or to be precise, Java bytecode, into a machine code. The Java runtime has a compiler inside, named just-in-time compiler. And that compiler makes decisions how it translates the Java, Java code into the machine code. Our JVM contains a different JIT compiler compared to the OpenJDK hotspots JIT, com JIT compiler, and it actually makes, it is smarter, it makes better optimizations. And this is where the speed up comes from. But again, you should not take the word, uh, my word for it, so let's try to deep dive one, uh, one, layer, one layer down. Let's talk about the uh, the profiling and the execution profile. So this is a representation of where the time is spent, where the TPU, uh, CPU time is spent in the Kafka, uh, in Kafka process. This is a flame graph. So I'm not sure that everybody is uh, able to read the flame graph. So let me just quickly go through that. Flame graph is a representation of call stack. So in this representation, we, we see that the function A calls function B the function B calls function C and D, etc. And the top of the flame, the top of the, uh, the top of the picture, actually shows um, which method is uh, which method is spending the CPU time. This is a completely artificial example of a, like a dummy benchmark, just illustrating the the flame graph. And you can see that there is a, uh, I'm not sure if it's readable, but you can see that there is a one big method, crypto bench execute, that takes a lot of time on the CPU. So as an application developer, what you would actually do if you want to speed up your application code is you probably go ahead and take a look at that method in particular. Try to optimize the algorithm, you know, switch bubble sort to quick sort, or, you know, that kind of optimization. If we go back to uh, the execution profile of Kafka. These are the real execution profiles. On the left, it's uh, OpenJDK. On the right, it's Prime. You can see, you don't need to dive into details, but what you can see is those flames, uh, the, those call stacks get narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower, and the top of the call stacks are just very small pieces, very small pieces that, um, that indicates that there is not a method that actually spends 50% of the CPU. There is a method that spends 0.02% of the C on the CPU, another method that's 0.03%, etc. But you have thousands of these methods. So as an application developer or a Kafka developer, you can't easily see a candidate for the optimizations. And that's the thing that uh, the compiler actually can do for you. So what compiler does is it does the micro optimizations for each and every um, each and every method in there, and when you add up those few very very little increments, very very little performance improvements, you get the benefits that we claim. Let me give you a specific example of a optimization that uh, that the compiler that all of the compilers do, but in our case, um, our our compiler does it better. That optimization is commonly known as method inlining. 
What does it mean? Is that when you have a method bar that calls method foo, the compiler actually decides that it just copies the content of the method foo into the method bar. The thing is that you eliminate a lot of CPU instructions, micro instructions that doesn't have to do all the virtual calls, doesn't have to put uh, the um, values on top of stack. So you're shaving off hundreds of infrastructure, uh, hundred, hundreds of um, um, instructions. Again, let's go for a specific example of Kafka, uh, Kafka um, kind of method inlining example. This is a again flame graph to just zoomed in to. Uh, run of Azozul, which is the plain vanilla OpenJDK. And you can see on the top that the method um, fetch manager new context actually calls one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different methods. That's what OpenJDK's uh, JIT compiler decided. Prime, on the other hand, Azul Platform Prime, decided clearly that it actually inlines all of the methods, reducing the overhead uh, in the execution. So that's you know, that's another few hundred, infra uh, few hundred instructions shaved off, and you're getting a 0, 0.0 something speed up. But if you do it consistently, you can actually get uh, a not noticeable one. Let's take a look uh, at another optimization. This slide will be kind of, let's, let's, I need to slow down in here a bit, and uh, let me try to get the, the message that I want to, uh, try to get through the message that I want to. So on the top left, you can see an uh, example of the Java code, which basically does, it sums up um, elements, in the, elements in the array if, uh, if a condition is met, met. This Java code uh, is translated with uh, um, OpenJDK's JIT compiler into the set of assembly instructions. We have roughly eight minutes left, so I probably cannot give you a full-blown you know, introduction to reading assembly. So let me try to decode it a bit for you. There are basically two blocks. The, one of the, the, first, the two blocks are identical, really. So the JIT compiler, for some reason, decided that it's going to do summing up of one element, then summing up of another element, and then jump back in the loop, for some reason. You know, it has its heuristics. So it's basically doing two elements per iteration, and then it jumps back and does another iteration. That's a lot of instructions. The same code compiled with Azul Platform Prime results in this number of, uh, of uh, instructions. And you're, you probably, you're probably going to say that, you know, that looks more consuming than, than the previous one. And I, and I can't blame you. But let's try to decode it again a bit more. What it actually does is um, that it uses the vector extractions of the CPU. Vector extractions meaning that it can manipulate multiple data in parallel with one, within one instruction. So what, uh, what, the machine code, what the machine code in here does, it puts 32 elements in the registers then puts another 32 elements, applies the masks, or applies the test on all of them at once in a single instruction, then add them again in a single instruction. So it's actually doing iterations at 32 elements at once. And that's where there's another speed up comes from. So these are just uh, examples of optimizations that the JIT compiler can do. And this is clear that you cannot do it yourself as a, as a developer. It's not practical. I'm going to start to wrap up here. So what I wanted to emphasize is that the choice of the JVM can drastically improve Kafka's performance. Just by switching, you know, we're talking about switching the JVM, switching the JDK that you used, which means pointing it to a different location, you know, Java home, um, can drastically improve performance or affect it. Another kind of way is that how do you leverage the improved performance? You can really take a look at it. I want more operations per second. You know, I want lower latencies. That's all good. You know, it will improve my business metrics. But also, you can use this performance improvement um, 
to reduce the cost of your infrastructure. Now, I had to, I had to put it there. I had to put the marketing statement. Yes, we are the fastest JVM out there. I'm sure that this will start a war. I'm sorry, and I'm just uh, looking forward uh, to, the, to the heckling from the, from the other guys. But you know how it is with bench marketing. You know, um, it's, not, it's never 100% uh, true all the time, but it's actually, um, yeah, most of the time, we are really very, very fast JVM. And this is not just Kafka, right? We're talking about Kafka just because this is a Kafka conference, right? This is a general purpose JVM. This is not like we're optimizing, a, we're doing a special distribution of Kafka you know, with our JVM. This is a JVM that you can try um, and uh, it will work on your other applications as well. And re-emphasizing, you know, you've, you've seen the level of the micro optimizations that the compiler does. You, know, you could argue that you can do you know, the inlining, for instance, you could do yourself as a developer, right? You one big method. That's probably not the best approach that you want to take. So this is not something that you can do as a developer to really speed up, uh, speed up the code. And with that, I'm basically open for any questions, for any, any hackling for the marketing statement. And uh, let's see what you guys come up with. <laughs>